All right, Mook. What? We live on a farm now, yeah. ish, which means we should probably source ourselves a proper farm vehicle, right? Yeah. An old quintessential Iowa farm truck of the sorts. Well, lucky for us, I think I know where we can look to find one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Digs. We've got some farm style stuff planned, and like I said, we need a farm truck to make it happen. That's right, the 68 F-250 from way long ago is finally returning. It's windy as hell out here. Let's get this thing fired up on the trailer to the shop and ready for the road. Tell me your secrets. I know your secrets, but tell me again. Oh, I got it! Oh, yeah. The crustiest 352 we've ever seen. That was the first carburetor I ever rebuilt. Oh yeah, that's right. This thing's got a carburetor build done on it. So if you never saw the first episode, this is a 68 F250 we pulled out of a barn here in Iowa a few years ago. You, me, and Luke did that, correct? Yes. It was a fun time, good video. Real decently solid truck. It does have some rot up here, but other than that, she ain't bad. Our interior is pretty decent inside. We've got a C6 transmission and what we believe is a 352 or a 360. It's a bit dustier and dirtier than it was in the video initially. Uh, I remember one of the key points being how clean the interior was, but that's clearly changed. So we got a little work to do in here. This is the painter's edition truck. Yeah, this it's covered in paint. It was used as scaffolding to paint a barn at some point, I'm sure. They hit a cow with it once, which is why the grill's all bashed in, and this corner's all bashed in. And then at another point in time, a straight truck backed into it and nailed the windshield. So, it's pretty much perfect for pulling some equipment around field to field. All the trucks we have have been backed into. By straight People trucks. People gotta stop! <laughs> <laughs> it's always a straight truck too, isn't it? Yes! Well, let's throw a battery in this thing, and I think, if I remember right, we need to hook up a temporary fuel tank. Yes, there's no in for the pump. So we'll hook that up, get a battery in it, and see if she comes to life. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I'm allergic to the cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was easy. Thank you to the fan that sent us this little sucker, by the way. It's turned out to be very useful in the last couple of videos. Luke's gonna pop our air cleaner off, make sure we haven't got any mice to get into that rather clean looking pile of junk right there. You might recognize this one from Mook's channel. Mook got her dump truck. It's my favorite vehicle. It'll be coming onto her channel here soon, so keep an eye out. All right, let's uh, let's hop in this some bitch and crank it up and see if it goes. It. Wow, whoever rebuilt that carburetor really knew what they were doing. I was gonna say it only runs with choke, it's junk, but <laughs> push up Kevin. That's not you, it's the motorcraft thing. <laughs> what idle? Nope. Classic 2100 motorcraft, only idles with full choke. All right, let's get this thing on the trailer. Yeah! If I remember right, we have, yeah. Zero brakes, and it likes to jump out of gear. <laughs> Sorry, Danny. Load her up.
fucked up despite coming out of gear like six times. You did a burnout on the ramps. I, no, I couldn't. <laughs> I was, like, it comes half out of gear and I can feel it like I don't want to move. And then it drops it and it goes, woohoo! <laughs> Let's get the summit strapped down and over to the shop. Yeah. Yeah. Son of a gun in the shop. Let us start figuring out what needs done. I know we have a transmission that jumps out of gear, which might just be low. Beyond that, I know our brakes do not work. Our pedal does move, so we might just have a bad master or an empty brake system and it just needs bled. And then we figure out which wheel cylinder is bad and replace it. The engine runs like crap, as you just saw, which is probably that. Uh, Motorcraft 2100. A lot of people really like those and swear by them. I am not one of those people. I have never had one treat me good. I don't know what other people do different, but I cannot seem to figure it out. Uh, driving it around, I noticed that our power steering was not working, and now I know why. It's because we don't have any. I forgot about that. <laughs> this is a three pulley, so it is really the perfect farm truck. And if you guys have ever driven a farm truck, you know that they they're held together by bailing wire and zip ties and rounded off bolts that someone used the pliers on. They barely work. The brakes suck, the power steering doesn't work, the belt flies off every once in a while, they might overheat if you pull something. You gotta choke them and pump it 1500 times before it starts. It's a thing with old farm trucks. So in some ways we're gonna try to kind of keep to that and have a truck that just just works enough for getting field to field. Yes, Mook, you have a question. Technically the power steering can't not work if it's not there. This is true. Can't be broken if it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, let's dig into this thing. I think first up, let's pop that master cylinder lid off and see what we're dealing with. Because as far as I remember, I've never looked in there. I got it. Let's see. Gotcha. It's empty. Let's get this sucker up in the air on our Ben Pack 2 post and fill that brake reservoir and See if we can maybe get some fluid down to the uh, to the tires. You measuring our brake lines, Kevy? Yep. Even though we're not gonna do a full brake job on this truck, hopefully, because I think it's literally just out of fluid, but everything was still working. Uh, we do need to put rubber lines in because they are cracked to hell. What? <laughs> oh, did I? But yeah, these rubber lines, especially up front, are all cracked up. Uh, what these do is swell internally, and they will allow pressure past, and they will clamp your brakes on, but they will not allow pressure to return very well, and then it will essentially leave your brakes locked on. They also have a tendency to just explode, and then you know you crash and die, and we're out farming corn. I don't want to die out in the old farm truck here. Ugh. That was a bad idea. Yeah, it was. This thing has seen gravel roads its whole life. It becomes a big piece. <laughs> With that being said, it's surprisingly clean. Like, the bed floor is excellent. I don't understand how that works at all. Oh, hey, an axle tag. Let's clean this up and see what ratio we have. Right here. 3.73. It's actually going to be a really good highway rear gear um, versus like a 410 or 456 in what I believe is a Dana 60 axle. So yeah, this would be a, this would be a good truck for driving on the roads. We might not even have to get tires for once because despite sitting for 20 something years or whatever it was, these old bias plies, I don't even know if they have any air pressure in them, but they still hold the truck just fine. I think it was around 10 years actually. Was it 10 years that it sat? Yeah. And it's been was, so long since we touched it, I don't even remember. That was two years ago, so we'll say around 12. <laughs> yeah, 12 years since it's been back on the road, for sure. Oh. You know what 
that sounds like to that me? That sounds awful. It sounds like a spring hitting the brake drum. What did I just say about having to do a whole brake system? <laughs> that that's what we do for a living? And that we'll probably have to do it again. As you guys probably know, we go through phases of repeatedly having to do the same component on a vehicle. It started with starters, uh, and then it went to fuel tanks, and now it's brakes. Actually, I think it's always been brakes, but this year it's kind of looking like it might be transmissions, which I am terrified if well, that's the deal. Don't have to jinx it. Ooh. That's definitely a broken spring in there, absolutely. All right, so we're taking our hub assembly off here to get this front to get this front drum off. I just pulled the cotter pin. I haven't moved this yet. I just want to show you guys. It was sitting right here. I have this much more turn before I have any preload on that bearing. So this is why it's important that when you do uh, your bearings, you get the right preload. Then you spin the drum a whole bunch, or spin your brake disc. Because what it'll do is work that grease out of that wheel bearing, and you can probably get another quarter turn to go back to your proper amount of preload. Another thing that some like to do, which I'm usually too lazy to do, but it is another like proper thing. Go drive 10 miles, come back, check all your preloads again, because that will get even more grease out, especially with some heat. Let's get this apart, see what the hell is screaming inside. There's plenty of goo. There is plenty. Of goo. It looks like someone's been in here and taken care of this truck. Knowing where it came from, uh, it was a very, very clean property. This was probably the only piece of equipment that wasn't still used on the whole property. And I think that guy took really good care of his stuff. So it's probably why this truck still rolls around and drives as well as it does, despite needing a carb and normal wear components. I'm liking this. This is probably the first time I've ever taken a car apart and approved of the way that the variants were packed. And we've been doing this for a long time. Self adjuster cable snapped. Wheel cylinder's junk. The pads are trashed. The pad is gone completely. Look at this. Damn it. I was really hoping I wouldn't have to do brakes for once. For the first time ever, these are brakes that absolutely need replaced just because of wear. Nevertheless, the fact that they are completely seized up and rusted and junk. Remember what I was saying earlier about farm trucks and their janky brakes and everything like just barely works? Exhibit A right there. All right, I guess we'll have a quintessential farm looking truck that properly operates and is safe, as is the junkyard digs way. I don't know why I tried to stray from it. I immediately got punished for doing that. Let's go have a margarita about it and order some parts. Well, Mooka should not take an expert to realize that that is absolutely not what that's supposed to look like right now. The ridge was so freaking big on the edge of these drums, the largest ridge I've ever seen in my life. I could not get those shoes to come out no matter what I did. So I had to take the wheel cylinder out. I had to take this top pin out, which thankfully was removable on these. I had to drill these J-hook retaining spring things out so that they would come loose. And then finally, once I pulled that upper pin, I was able to get everything off. And now it's just hanging there by the emergency brake cable. Mook's got our front brakes disassembled. Yep. Uh, they are a little different from the half ton stuff we usually work on. I'm listening to Kevin struggle and yell all the way back there, and I'm just like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. That sounds fun. <laughs> I don't quite have the right adapters for these drums, so we're not going for a perfect surface. We're just going to make them mostly flat again. The rears we're going to have to end up replacing because, I mean, it's chunked out. There's big pieces missing. It's, it's just a bad deal. I'm going to get these fronts at least smoothed out. we got the new ones for the rear on the way from O'Reilly's and we'll be good to go. There it goes. Goopy. Here, you want to eat it? I think I'm good. All right, as much as I hate talking about brakes every damn episode anymore, this is a three quarter ton and we haven't done any of those, so we might as well go through it. As you saw, Mook already took our axle shaft out. Just take your nuts off, hit it with a nice big hammer. It'll bounce it and it'll come right off. And then you're either gonna take the appropriate size socket and do it correctly and take this big nut off and the one behind it and then pull your bearing out. Or if you're me and you don't own that socket and you never have, and you're working on a farm truck, and I guarantee none of the farmers before me who have been in here had that socket either, uh, you're gonna take a nice power through screwdriver or a punch. Power through meaning there's a steel bar all the way through. These are the ones you do hit with a hammer. 
and you're gonna find where someone has already done this on one of the corners and go ahead and loosen that nut. All right, got our first nut off. And we'll have this little plate right here. This plate is supposed to be bent over the nut behind it and the nut in front of it to help like lock them together, so to say. Um, and you can see that whoever put this together last didn't really care to bend those back. It looks like someone put actual grease in this bearing. It's, they're not supposed to be grease. They're, this is a full floating axle, so there's supposed to be a seal right here. And it's supposed to have differential fluid come all the way out to these bearings and be partially submerged or at least thrown up when you're driving. And that's what lubes these bearings. Bonk. <laughs> wow. Not a lot of preload on that one. <laughs> Any moment now. There we go. In the bucket. Behind him, we will have our outer bearing. There we go. And if this side is going to cooperate, unlike the other side, we should be able to just pull this all off. Oh, hell yes, thank God. Whoa. Still a hell of a ridge all the way around that drum, so it is going to need a replace. We got new ones here, so no problem. But this one came off, and the reason is the uh, self-adjuster cable on this side was broke, so this guy hasn't moved in years. All right, we'll get this all disassembled, cleaned up, and ready to go back together. As far as that goes, same stuff as any other drum brakes. We got six points to clean, get our new hardware in, new shoes, la di da di da Let's make it happen. Hello, it's me, the sun. I took everything off, I cleaned everything, I made certain spots not brown, and then I made them brown again. And now I need more than two hands to put brake components on. Where are they? Oh, there's shoes. I'll get them. I'm taking your chair. What the heck? <laughs> We've learned that these three quarter ton brakes are simpler in ways, yet a little more pain in the ass in other ways. No! God damn it. Son of a gun. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Oh, that sucks. What the hell? Get over there. Just Kevin's butt. Oh, got it. Woohoo! Oh. Anyway, green goes on the passenger side. Uh, red goes on the drivers. These brown springs that have a loop in them go on the front. And the loop goes up so that it clears the wheel seal and the hub. Did you get it? Yep. Yeah, now you're all cut up. I'll turn you loose with Mook. Here you go. Don't kill anyone. No, the blue one goes down here. Or about there. So this guy actually slides back behind this. Uh, there we go. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's not a brake job until you burp on them. Or hiccup on them. <laughs> Well, not entirely, we still need the drum, but you, the hardware. Well, let's get our uh, wheel bearings, wheel seals, uh, drums, and rubber lines all set up. I'll finish mine on the back, and then we'll be good to go. That means I won the race. You did? Ha <laughs> ha! How's it going, Moop? I think I got it. Got our master all bled up? Yep. Hell yeah. We've got all new components on all four corners. We got new turn drums and repacked bearings up front. We got cleaned out bearings and new drums in the rear. Uh, right now we're waiting on wheel seals. The ones we ordered for front and rear were the wrong size. Uh, this three quarter ton of this year has some interesting parts. And oh, you know what? Damn it's it. probably because of that right there. This was a camper special. I forgot about that. If you're curious what the camper special means, your camper special will move your back axle backwards a little bit. This was done for towing trailers or hauling like a pop-up camper in the back of your bed. That little bit longer wheelbase was better for hauling. One thing to note about that, if you're searching for a truck bed for your truck and you find a bed, make sure it either is or isn't, depending on what you need, a camper special because that wheel well is in a different location. We're gonna get these brakes wrapped up. I am running some new lines here in the back. I had a couple twists off. Uh, we got our new rubber line, new hard line back to it. 
I'm going to run this one and then our back axle is done. And then throw the new rubber lines on the front, put the master cylinder on, hopefully bleed everything here yet tonight. And minus the wheel seals, we'll have brakes done in one day. Couldn't have done it without you, Mook. Thank you for your help. Yeah. Let's get her done though. And then go get something to drink. Ice cream! What? <laughs> this is the final piece of our brake system right here. Let's just hope I can get this to come off. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Brakes are done underneath the truck. Let's go ahead and put our new master on and finish these suckers up. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's frozen the bore or something, or there's a clip. Probably, probably a clip. I forget to remove. Oh, this is to mean I have to crawl inside and take it off on the pedal. Go get her, Mook. Thanks. While Mook is dealing with that, let's dig through the engine bay and see where we are <laughs> as far as all this goes. Cool, it looks good. Look how greasy this thing is. Like... <laughs> oh, um, what the hell is going on with the oil? Okay, we need new oil for sure. I don't know why it's a little milky. Hopefully we don't have any cylinder head or cylinder head gasket issues. Our plug wires all seem to be present and accounted for, which is nice. They're all plugged in. We got a vacuum tree right here. He's all capped off. That's looking good. Manual choke. You know what? I think I actually have a Holly carb that'll work for that. It is a two barrel. Down. Yep. Oh. Looking good. Those aren't bubbles, by the way. They're little bits of like the wax or whatever the hell they put in the uh, cylinder for preservatives when it's sitting on the shelf. Let's get those lines hooked up and get this some bitch bled. All right. Thanks to the uh, the fender mook. <laughs> they have to use the fender lizard today, which is this this little nifty tool for uh, bleeding brakes on your own that has a little remote. Uh, you can check those out. They're called the fender lizard. Just Google it. But yeah, new masters on, hooked up, and bled. Go ahead, mook. Hit the hit the stop button. Stop. And back up. Looking good. Now we just gotta get our wheel seals in, get all our drums on, and we're done with the brakes, we can move on to the fun stuff. Alright, here we go. Good luck in there, everybody. Places everyone. Including parts. There you go, Kevin. Put that into place. Okay. I'll get the next piece. Ah, uh, we need a little more grease on this guy. Oh my heck, I think a bucket of grease is here. Okay. Thanks, I, goo lady. I got it. So, like we mentioned earlier, taking these apart. There's my preload right there. I'm going to spin this a bit. And it moves again. As you're working that grease out of the bearings. Set our preload to... Yeah. There. Oh. oh, big sad. Yeah, this would definitely not fly, haha, <laughs> pun intended, in uh, aviation, but... This truck isn't meant to fly. Yeah, this truck should stay on the ground if all goes well. This is so much easier with two people. <laughs> Done. All right, I am on the very last corner of the very last step, which is adjusting our drums. Get them all set up, ready to go. And the design of these brakes allows me to show you guys really well what we're doing when we're adjusting drums and how to do it. It's all about that little gold piece right in the center. That guy right there is our adjuster wheel, our star wheel. These cables that were on the truck sit like this in our brakes and pull 
on a little lever right here in the, in the dark abyss. And what that lever does is turns that star wheel one click at a time. And as your pads wear, it spreads them out farther and helps keep the, the distance between the edge of the drum and the pad equal throughout the life of the shoe. Sorry, not pad, shoe. Now that lever only allows this star wheel to turn one direction and you can hear them click if I, if I can get this to move just right. There you go, hear the little click clicks. There, you can hear them clicking on those teeth. What we want to do when we're adjusting this is set that initial position so that we don't have to wait for that to take a month to move out an inch or a half inch or whatever it needs to move our pads from a dead zero all the way out to the edge of the drum right here where we need them. So, to set this guy up to the appropriate position right next to the drum, we're going to grab our screwdriver. We're going to put him in right here. We're going to pry all the way left. We're going to switch sides the other side of the star wheel and pry all the way right. See where our star wheel is now and see how far it can go. So what that's telling me is that I'm able to move that whole shoe assembly that much because this is the center bottom point of our shoe assembly. In the end we want him to move very very little. So we're going to take our screwdriver and start turning our star wheel. This can take a while on some styles of brakes. On other ones it's right there. As you can see now it doesn't move as far as it did before because I've tightened it up more, so let's keep going. Alright, so now as you can tell we're down to maybe a quarter inch of lateral movement on this thing. So we're going to start turning our drum and listening for when the shoes touch. I'm going to go all the way this way, which will push it to this end of our drum. And we can feel our brake touches. I'm going to go all the way the other way. And we can feel our brake touches. So that we know we really truly are getting close to properly set and we're gonna go until we can move it ever so slightly and then still touch both sides and you're just gonna keep doing that back and forth feel where the shoes hit until you get to the point any pressure either direction the shoes will drag all right there we go I am no longer able to really move this either direction and my shoes are ever, ever, ever so slightly touching on both sides. So I know I'm set even front to rear, and most of my play has been taken up in our brake system. And when I hop in there and hit the brake pedal, we should have a nice, clean uh, brake experience. With that being said, you hop in there and you hit your brake pedal, especially on full manual brakes like this truck, and it travels a long ways to the floor before you get any uh, actual braking, then you need to come back under here and tighten all four corners up. And you want to try to keep them all even too, which is exactly the reason we do this little left-right dance. Because if you just run this in until you hear that brake shoe just start to touch, there's a chance that it's just all the way forward or it's all the way backwards and it's not actually truly centered in your drum. And then you will have soft brakes. Also on vehicles like this that have drums on all four corners, you want to make sure that your left and your right pull equally when you're out there test driving it and if it pulls to either side when you hit the brakes just go obviously tighten up the other side or loosen the side you're on either way these brakes are now 100 percent done it's time to put our wheels back on the truck and drop this thing on the ground and start stuff like oil changes and leak repairs and get a gas tank set up and all the other fun stuff. I think we got some carburetor work to do too. Uh, side note I'm gonna leave this rubber boot off until I do my test drive and make sure everything is happy, and then I'll go put them back on. Sounds good to go. <laughs> what you doing, Mookers? Greasing up all the grease certs. Oh yeah, get, that the, one's get some grease in our, our kingpins and our joints and the U-joints and all that. Really important in the U-joints especially because they've been sitting for who knows how long, and if we don't get some grease in them, they will absolutely fail. All the pins are probably rusted and completely dry, so. Thankfully these had grease certs, we should be good to go. I imagine they live. So I've got our tires all mounted up here. Uh, we have a couple issues. Number one, and I was anticipating this, but I didn't think it'd be this bad. Look at the top of the tire. <laughs> see it drop? That dip you see is a uh, giant flat spot in the tire where these are hopelessly out of round. Uh, and of course all four corners have that going on because this truck sat for 10 years on these old bias plies. Now you might be saying, Kevin, no problems, do what you always do, go down and get a new set of tires. Um, about that. <laughs> if you guys know anything about these, you already know what I'm going to say next, but this right here 
is a split rim. This is a two-piece rim. Uh, these are notoriously dangerous to assemble and disassemble. A lot of people have been hurt by these rims and therefore a lot of tire shops do not work on them and I don't think there's anyone around here that does and I am not about to do that myself. Thankfully though, this here is a six and a half by eight lug pattern. And as you can tell, those eight on six and a half uh, rims ran for a very long time, specifically in the F-250, all the way from 53 to 96. So there are tons and tons of wheel options for this truck. The sad thing is, I really liked how these, especially in the back, this rusty farm truck off-white with the dirty bias plies, I really like how those look. They really complete the farm truck look, and I think without that, it's just not gonna be the same. Before we drop this thing down, there's a leak under here I need to address that Luke pointed out. Check this thing out. Uh, clearly, a lot of trans fluid coming from right here. I think it probably has something to do with that. <laughs> just maybe, I mean, I am no scientist. Let's go ahead and just tighten that up quick. The good news is that this was an absolute definite trans leak, so our whole issue with the trans jumping out of gear probably relates to there not being enough fluid in it because now we know it's been leaking. Okay, that is fixed. Check out how greasy this thing is. Like, what is, what is this? <laughs> oh, that's the front main, that's what that is. It's flying off and piling up here and then making a stalagmite. <laughs> Look at that, there's no space right there. Yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be able to put your hand through here. This is crazy. I bet we could take 15 pounds off this truck if we just took all the grease off. I'd say 100. <laughs> I think I bumped off of the back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Go right there. Gravel dust and grease. That was just that one spot. <laughs> yeah, greasy old bastard. But hey, them are farm trucks for you. Mm. Well, that's not great, that's for sure. Why are you like that? God damn. What the heck? Is it on the side there dropping on the frame? Yeah, no, it's a, like a terrible spot for a <laughs> plug. I don't know what's going on with that. That's all. Well, fun. Uh, we'll, we'll drain this and <laughs> change filters, put some oil in, and just hope it doesn't happen again. Wow, look at how well this greaser has been greased. <laughs> it's heckin' amazing. Thanks, Mook. Yeah. Oh, there's one right there, too. Wow. All right, I've got our old fuel line completely disconnected now, right up here. Uh, when I was under there the other day, I did trace it back. It runs to just the cab tank. This truck has two tanks. The other one's not hooked up to anything anymore. And the selector valve's disconnected, so that's good. I'm going to blow some air uh, from up here into the tank, and we're gonna see if anything happens. I really hope it does, because I don't want to take that tank out, slash I don't have one. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, you go up front. I'll pressurize the tank. Anything? No. Well, that ain't good. There's a new, there's a mook at the tank. Let's send it down in there and see what we're looking at. Oh, God. <laughs> That's all, oh, man. Okay, so there's absolutely no way in hell this tank will ever work. It is junk. <laughs> Okay, well that answers that. A no-go on the end cab tank, which is probably okay because it would have leaked anyway, and then we always end up gassing ourselves out with these tanks. This was a triple tank truck at one point. This one's gone, but that one's still there. Yeah, I can't get any of it on camera, but I don't really need to. Just what you can see right there is enough to know that this is a no-go. <laughs> Damn it. Alrighty, welcome to the third and final day of working on this truck. Hopefully get this thing wrapped up today. Um, I had a little breakthrough last night, about 20 minutes away in a little town called McCallsburg. I was able to find these. This right here is a pile of four tires that all hold air and are, for the most part, 
round. On top of that, they're all white, so they should match the truck a little bit better than the black ones we got up front. And they are single piece rims, so I can safely have these mounted and dismounted and get new tires on here eventually if I decide to. I also found ourselves a boat fuel tank to run for the time being until I can get a new cab fuel tank ordered. I can't get one in here in time for this weekend for what we're going to be using this truck for in a separate video, but that should do it for the time being. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get those tires on. Ta-da! New tires. Luke, what? what? <laughs> They're all on there looking good. Uh, we paid a hundred bucks for the whole set. And what I did not notice was that these were Chevy rims and the, uh, the hubcaps don't go on. But eh, live and learn, right? What do you say we set up a fuel system? Yeah. I'm taking off this heckin' carburetor again. <laughs> just kidding, it's been like two years. This is the point where I discover any connections that I forgot. Where are you? Hey! <gasps> I got them all! <laughs> Was that your finger popping? My middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> That was the worst high five I've ever experienced. Wow. Now we got a different one to put on, right? Indeed, we do get to put a new one on, Mook. And to do so, we have this. This is a new old stock unit from God knows how long ago. Uh, should be pretty much bolt on, ready to go. I don't know what size. I'm gonna say it's around a 350. Should be perfect for this motor. And of course, we also have our install kit here so that we can hook up the kick down since this is an auto. The Hollies come with this nifty little bracket. You just gotta put the bolt and the clip in right here so that it knocks the cake down backwards. This might be the shiniest part we put up here. Oh, no, that auto filter's pretty shiny. All right, I dug through the paper a little bit, found out that this car was actually from 01. Potentially, we should probably be doing a power valve and an accelerator pump, but we're gonna throw it on there and see how it does. This right here is the little screw I was talking about earlier. It's just this little uh, black tab right here and this screw, and you run him in there. And what he does is that when this, this hooks up to your, your trans kick down right here, which sits right about yonder. It has a bit of a spring from here to here on the trans. But when your throttle comes all the way open, that will throw your kick down back and you can adjust this screw to um, not limit your full throttle capabilities if it's too far forward or to kick down at the right time if your screw's too far back. So the Summit carburetors that we used to push uh, back in the day have a whole kit you have to buy. These are just the screw in the plate and everything else comes on the carburetor stock. Uh, speaking of those old Summits, as we've learned more over the years, we've learned that uh, the name brand stuff costs more for a reason and it is the better route. One major specific reason is because right here on your throttle shaft, uh, the Summit carbs have no shaft seals. So when your carburetor gets hot, your engine gets hot, metal expands, air slips in, and you can watch it on your AFR. It'll start getting lean. These Hollies don't do that. They actually have a seal in there to help prevent that. So it just goes to show that uh, you get what you pay for in a lot of stuff. And carburetor's not really somewhere you want to skimp out. However, that doesn't mean go out and buy a giant 750 CFM race carburetor for your 350 or your 305 because that's way too much carb and you're just going to be wasting money and it's going to run like poop because once again remember we don't build race cars we build street cars or farm trucks <sighs> a 4412 anyway let's get the sun gun bolted on there i did just realize this is actually a full mechanical choke so this is literally the exact carburetor setup for this truck could not have gone better let's make it happen Beautiful. It's backwards. What? <laughs> Heck off. No, it looks great. What did you do, Kevin? Hmm? What did you do? I put a tank in the back. How did you do it? Uh, well, there was conveniently a hole in the floor because, you know, old farm truck stuff. They actually had a, a second auxiliary tank just like that one over here. So this thing had three tanks. The only trick now is to figure out a way to secure it. We can maybe one of, one of those. There we go, and zippity doo -dah. Wow. Temporary fuel tank. We're getting some goo in the shifter machine. <laughs> we are indeed. And in other news, minus the choke, I just realized, 
our carburetor is hooked up and ready to go. So, once that finishes and all that's good to go, we'll fire this thing up and see if she runs. That's how the choke goes. Oh, is it? And this is where the, the coil sits. We're, we're good to go. <laughs> Farm truck stuff. Yeah. Ta-da. It's kind of in there. <laughs> Carb's on, battery's in. I'm about to fill the tank with gas. I uh, got an air cleaner. I can do it. Kevin, I can do it. <laughs> Let's finish up the last couple things, fill this with trans fluid, and see how she runs. I'm so proud of you. Yeehaw! Everyone's being gassy. Alright, I'm gonna give you a little a little juice so we don't have to crank on it for three days, but we gotta feed the whole fuel system, so it might take a minute. Hit it! Go ahead. Oh, got a little feel. Go ahead. Well, she doesn't want to idle still. <laughs> One more time. Come on, you old girl. Go ahead. time. Might just be cold. Yep. Well, that's good. Yeah. I remember it did used to idle when the power valve was bad when we first did the revival, but it was chugging fuel at that time. Didn't want to run on choke at all with this carb, which means it's fueling correctly. It's just the engine's very displeased. Let's make a mark on a harmonic, get the timing light, and just tune this motor. I'll figure it out. All right, I've got our vacuum gauge set up the best I can. Uh, he's going to tell us how everything is behaving. The higher the vacuum, the more efficiently and happier the engine is running. Uh, I will be playing with these mixture screws, as well as our transfer slots, which I, they're already checked. Those are set to a square, so I really shouldn't have to touch those. Our idle speed, I will be raising by turning the distributor, because it will run more efficiently. Once I get this thing to idle, you will see me mess with our float height, most likely, because every time you put a carb on a new motor, uh, each fuel pump, even when you change fuel pumps, you should do this. Uh, each fuel pump is different, even if they're identical. They'll pump a little bit different pressures. So you need to re-verify your float height. I'm going to grab a screwdriver and a wrench and let's do this. The distributor bolt was loose, but their distributor don't move. I don't really think this would be a problem seeing how greasy this motor is. Oh, I need to unhook this so as to not screw up my initial timing. And plug it off so it doesn't leak. All right, get a white dot drawn on the harmonic. Go ahead, Mook. Hit it. That's already 
trying to idle a little better. So I think our timing was just way out of whack. Ironically speaking of whack. farm truck on the west side of Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we put this dumb one? <laughs> hey, you son of a gun. Find the driver? Yes. <laughs> By the way, we always get the question, where can I get stickers? They come free with shirts. You get two free stickers with every shirt order. I have stickers of my Nova now. Oh yeah, you get Mook stickers too, don't you? You get my booger truck, and now I have stickers of my Nova. Hopefully you're gonna have a sticker pack that you can buy. In time. But, yeah, this is all after we outsource, which is soon. Yeah, it's, it's soon. Up. Is it even a farm truck if there isn't a bungee cord holding the battery in place? Well, we are done under here. We got to check the trans fluid. We're not quite done under here. <laughs> Either way, let's uh, vacuum out the large chunks of crap from our interior quick and go for a drive. Look at this dash pad. How did the farm truck become the cleanest thing we own suddenly? Nothing a little D germ can't help. No kidding. Brakes leave a little to be desired, so we might need to adjust those, but we got good temperatures and pressures and a nice clean interior for a farm truck. I think we're ready to get this sun bitch home and do some work on the farm. Let's do it. 
no, no power steering. Staying in gear though. Crazy what uh, three quarts of transmission fluid will do. I must have a exhaust shroud somewhere that's loose, that's rattling like crazy. Boy, oh, oh. <laughs> it fits the bill for farm truck. Wow, the brakes are not great. Not gonna lie. Hopefully those either self-adjust or I can get under with a screwdriver and get that fixed up. Either way, let's top off our tank and get the heck out of here towards the farm. All right, we got her all filled up, sat here and idled perfectly the entire time. Uh, like this thing runs downright incredible. Hopefully these brake shoes uh, embed into the drums a bit and get a little better bite slash also um, self-adjust a little and get that tensioning correct so we got a little bit better brakes because they're, they're not the best. <laughs> Either way, we got about eight miles to go, so let's do it. This truck has no seat belts, I just realized. Ain't no seat belts in here, we die like farmers. Oh yeah, so fun fact, we got an inch of snow last night. Let's see if I can get this heater to work. That feels like it does nothing. Oh no, that's hot air. Hell yeah. Oh, also, I, I kind of forgot, these are manual brakes. I don't think I've ever driven a manual brake uh, Ford truck before that's drums on all four corners. So on top of them needing to probably adjust a little bit and embed into the pads and the rotors, or sorry, drums, I, I don't know what's normal. So it could just be that I'm being a, a little wimp and I need to stand on that thing. Everything down here is looking good. Temps are nice, pressure's nice. Um, looks to be charging a little bit. Speedometer works. We got 106,000 miles. Let's go home. Oh, yeah. That's some good farm truck stuff right there. This old girl's doing pretty damn good going down the road. Got a solid 55. Pulls a little to the left, but it's also windy out. It's really not that loud inside. I'm enjoying this thing. This will be a really good farm truck. Oh, also one cool little thing I forgot to point out. That right there is an inspection tag for Iowa for 1978. Iowa, and a lot of people ask about this, Iowa does not have vehicle inspections or smog tests, but we used to for a very brief time, and that is proof of one back in the day. This should be the last bit of snow we see for the year. And we'll finally get some spring, some warm weather, we can finally do some farm stuff out here. We got a killer series coming that I think you guys are going to love. Uh, this is kind of a teaser for the whole thing. This truck is a prop that we're going to be using throughout, but uh, it'll be coming out here in a couple weeks. It should be a lot of fun. I am looking forward to it so much. Another news, I think the exhaust system might be saying goodbye. It's gotten a little louder over the last couple miles. That's probably fine. It was a little too quiet for a farm truck anyway. Yeah, we did. That went really well, actually. I like the look. I like the way it rides. I kind of wish there were some form of seat belts, um, <laughs> but I need to tighten up the steering box a little bit, find the exhaust rattle down below, probably get some new plugs and plug wires, and then this son of a gun is dialed in. Oh, there's seat belts. Yeah. There's All right, well, <laughs> we got that part fixed. <laughs> Well, Mook, what do you say we go finish this video off and prep this truck for the next one where it returns to duty as a real true farm truck? Yeah. Let's do it. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's adjust these brakes real quick. Here's how you do it. You throw it in reverse and you just roll back. I can actually literally feel it adjusting the star wheel, I think. That or I'm braking something. I don't really know. <laughs> Mook's like, what the hell are you doing? Oh! There we go. That little Holly two barrel is, that's a, that's a good little hacker. There's all the campers and the limo. <laughs> oh, hey, you're giving away secrets of upcoming episodes, Mook. Don't look. <laughs> you know what? 
It only makes sense that we do our outro in front of the cornfield. So ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Finally, the continuation of the revival for the 68 F-250 from like two years ago. Finally got this sucker fixed up and on the road where it belongs. What you, we got? We got a Hobbs. Oh, a gold farm cat. <laughs> For the end of today's video, we're not going to do anything crazy for a big finale because that is what's coming up in the next episode where the whole thing is focused on this truck getting back to doing its job as a farm truck. From all of us here at Junkyard Digs, thank you for watching. Make sure you comment, hit like, subscribe, all of the above. Uh, follow Junkyard Mook here on YouTube as well. Hi. We'll see you guys right here next week for another episode. Peace. Ripley's here too. Oh, there's more cats. Yeah. There's another one. Bingo's under the truck. And another one. There's Ripley. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Spoilers. More spoilers. <gasps> <laughs> what?